Now having designed our piece and planned our tables, the next thing we want to do is use the slice tool in Fireworks so that we can define uh, the areas that are going to be exported. Right now we have one big image and our goal is to slice it up into pieces uh, and then um, name each of those pieces and make sure that each one of those pieces is a GIF or a JPEG as appropriate. Let's move my toolbar in the scene here. I'm slightly zoomed out so you can follow what I'm doing. And then here is the slice tool. In CS3 it's green, but it's the same tool. Why they changed it, I don't know. And I'm going to create, based on our tables, row one and row two. And then for each of the buttons, I'm gonna go ahead and create uh, a slice also. Now let me backtrack. Let me undo and undo. A common mistake that people make is to do something like this. And it's an intuitive mistake. It's a natural mistake because people are trying to be efficient about the slices. And theoretically, if you eliminate the white space, you're eliminating pixels that people would have to download for no reason. However, what will happen is once we put this in the code, these things are going to end up closing up and moving over to the left. Because of our table structure, it's easier to add just a little bit of extra white space to preserve our formatting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start under the line. And I'm just going to keep these guys the same width. And now, because these images can't overlap. They're going to bump up against each other and they're going to bump up against the left of the page. Now I'm not going to slice the bottom bar again and here's my phone. I'll just do something like that. I'm not slicing the bottom bar again because it's identical to the top bar. I might as well just use this graphic again. In this instance I'm going to add a little extra space and um, let me go ahead and make that width a little bit less because it's snapping to the next one. And then I'm just going to I'm going to try to option drag. There we go. Here's the next one. So that each page will have its own slice. Now remember that it's one graphic per page, so this doesn't imitate my tables exactly, but once I'm done I'll have all of the pieces I need. So this is not necessarily what my final design is going to look like. Also I've left white space along the top. I'm just going to put a couple of line breaks on top of my table, so I, otherwise I'd have to extend this slice up towards the top. Now let's look at the uh, layers palette. Move this down just a little bit and I'm going to move my window over so you can see. And what I want to do is I want to name each slice. All lowercase please, no capital letters, no spaces. So this is going to be pick home. This is going to be pick about this is going to be the picture for the products page. And I like to name them with pick or BTN for buttons. Whatever will help me keep them together in the list. There's only one phone. But remember that when I look in these things, look at these things in a folder, they're alphabetized if I choose to order them that way. So here's button products. Button about. button home, my bar, and here is my logo. So this is going to define the areas that get exported. Next, what I want to do is click on my preview tab and I'm going to zoom back into 100% here if it will let me. I can move this. What I want to do is open up my optimize palette, which is here. See if I can position this a little bit better. I'm going to move my tool palette off screen. You can see a little bit better what I'm doing. And now my rule of thumb with uh, optimizing, remember that GIF files reduce image size by removing colors 
and JPEGs removes, remove image size by compromising quality. Now these have two colors. The common mistake is to say, here, let's uh, undock this so it's here on the screen. Common mistake is to look at this and say, well, very few colors, how many do I see? Only two. And you'll notice that it becomes very jaggy, especially if I zoom in on it. And the reason is that there's actually more than two colors there. And if I go to eight, which is what I like to use for text on a background, you'll see that there's all of these intermediate colors. That's called anti-aliasing, and that's what's used to smooth my lines out. So going back to 100%, I'm going to select this one and this one. Let's get them all. I'm going to set those all to be GIF 8. I just use that as my default for text on a background. Off screen, I'm going to set GIF 8 for the um, phone. And then let's get these guys. Now, these have all sorts of blends and gradients and a lot of color in them. And if I go to GIF, they hold up pretty well at 256 colors. But they are, if I can get them on your screen here, 18.83K for this one. If I go to JPEG, which is going to accommodate my blends and things better, even at 80%, they're 12K. And if I go to 60%, I'm not going to get much reduction in image quality. I'm down under 10K. Good for me. Let's take these two because they're basically the same image with different colors and make them 60%. So now I've got my images sliced and optimized. My next step will be to export the images.